Hey, you doing everyone? Greetings and welcome to today's episode of 8 Bits in the Basement. So what I would like to do today is I would like to take a PC analog joystick, which we can buy quite cheaply nowadays on eBay, and convert it so that it will work on a color computer. Now, the reason I want to do this is I've had my color computer for quite some time and I made up a nice little adapter that will allow it to be used with an Atari joystick. So I can play 90% of the games that came out for this without too much hassle. But the 10 remaining percent require an analog joystick so that you have that precise movement and whatever. I could go on eBay and I could pay a fortune for an original joystick that was to go with this computer. But number one, they cost a fortune. And number two, they're supposed to be quite uncomfortable and not really much of a pleasure to use. There were two main types actually. There was the Black Beauty, which was non-self-centering. And then there was also the deluxe joystick, which was a self-centering, or it could be a free-floating joystick, depending on what way, you, uh, what way you set it up. But like I say, they're very expensive and they're supposed to be quite uncomfortable. Whereas these PC joysticks are quite cheap still, and you can buy them from a, a variety of different manufacturers, so you can get whatever comfort level you want, more or less. So that's the path I decided to take. So the way these joysticks work, they're actually set up to work with putty -entometers. A putty -entometer, you would know best from something like a volume control on a TV when you turn it down or you turn up the TV. That's usually a putty -entometer in there that's increasing or diminishing the, the power that's going to the speaker, more or less, or the amplifier to make the volume go up and down. So these guys work in more or less the same manner. Move to the left or move to the right, you're adjusting that little pot and it's making the guy on screen move. But there are two ways that a pot can be set up. It can be set up as a voltage divider, which is what the cocoa needs, or as a variable resistor, which is the way they come for a PC. And the modification change from one to the other isn't all that difficult. When it's a voltage divider, like is needed for the cocoa, all three prongs on the pot are used. You've got ground, you've got voltage, and then you've got your wiper going out to the cocoa so it can tell what level the voltage is at. And when it's set up in this configuration as a variable resistor, only two prongs are used. So you've got a voltage coming in and you've got the wiper going out to the computer, but what's measured there isn't voltage, what's measured is the actual resistance, and that's what displays the little character on screen. But basically what it comes down to is the way this is set up, it won't work on the Coco right now as it is. So it'll need to be modified. So what I'd like to do first is I would like to use this little guy on my Apple II, which I know is working right, to make sure that this is working properly. And then we can look at doing the mod on it. But just before I go into all that, I'll just show you this guy a little bit. So what I did was when I bought this, well, I bought it with auto fire integrated. Now you don't really need that for this setup, but it's got a switch here that will allow you to turn on and off auto fire. It's also got two trim pots on it for the horizontal and vertical axis. So if there's any uh, movement of a character on screen that we don't want, like if when we start the game he's running off to the right the whole time, we can adjust these little guys so that it works properly with certain games. So that's handy to have. And the other thing on this is there's two switches on the bottom of it, which means I can convert this from a self-centering, as it is here, to a free-floating joystick, where it'll uh, kind of stay where you put it, more or less. So it's handy that way. I've got the best of both worlds, really. I've got auto fire, and I've also got the equivalent of a comfortable deluxe joystick that hopefully I can get to work on my Coco too. So let's see if it works on the Apple, and then let's do this little mod and we'll see if it works. In fact, everything you need to do it yourself in the description. See you in a moment. Okay, I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. And after pulling the whole thing apart without filming any of it, and the reason for it is that I tested this joystick on my Apple II. Now I made a little adapter for the Apple II so that it did take one of these PC analog joysticks a little while back. And I just wanted to be sure before we started fooling around with this that it was working properly and it's just as well I tested it because actually although the up down left and right are working fine neither of the fire buttons were working and the reason for it was that there's a little break on the ground line here so we're going to repair that and then we'll have a working joystick that we can convert for the cocoa but as I have it all apart here anyway let me just give you a little walk around it so this here is our bottom plastic as you can see it it's got two switches on it so they will allow us to have a self-centering joystick 
on both axes or else we can have a kind of free floating kind of as you would use it for flight sims and whatnot up here in it then we've got this little board here which is for our auto fire so there's a switch near the fire buttons on the top of the shaft and when we turn it on it activates this little board and this is the guy that pretty much gives us auto fire so to make shooting in games a little bit easier that we don't have to press the button all the time so it's a simple enough little design on a small little pcb we've got three transistors we've got six or seven resistors and we've got two capacitors in there that make up that board and then we've got our top plastics here so we've got our little our little trimmers here so that we can kind of zone in our potentiometers so they work right and we're not kind of work running away on the screen or whatever when we're playing the games we can pretty much fine tune them and coming out of this guy we've got two little pcbs with rubber buttons on them so that's our button one and our button two but now this here is after making me look like a bit of an idiot because when I was explaining to you earlier I said that a potentiometer was a round thing that you turned a knob on and you know we could go left and right or up and down or whatever but this is actually exactly the same thing although it's using a different design instead of the pop being a roundy thing what we've got is we've got a kind of a linear one so it's a bar and pretty much the wiper you'll see is moving on it from left to right so it does exactly the same job it's just laid out a little bit different and it's still got three prongs on it so we've got our i suppose our left and right for our ground and our five volt and we've also got a prong for our wiper as well to send signals back to the computer so it shouldn't pose a problem in the actual uh setting up of this to work with the cocoa now like i was saying before the problem that i'm going to fix on this is this little broken ground wire so the reason that broke is if you look at the design of this thing then these wires are coming down the shaft and then they're coming through this little hole at the bottom and then they pass through a hole here in the plastics to go into the uh, auto fire board and what's happening is when you push up and down there's a little bit of strain coming on those wires through that hole and that's what broke this guy there's no two ways about it and i can tell that this has been re-soldered so somebody tried to fix it and they did a reasonably good job on it but see the problem is the wire was stripped and then it was re-soldered back on so it kind of became shorter again being spliced in in that way so it probably broke even quicker so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this black wire here and i'm going to put in a longer fresh piece that i can solder in here so we should kind of get around that problem and i've noticed that this little red wire here is going the same way it's very weak and it looks like it's about to break so i'll do the same thing with the red wire so when i see you again all that will be done and we'll have a working joystick that we can convert over for our coco hey we're going right and left ah look our fire button is working again we managed to fix it that is excellent which means that now what we can do is we can convert this over to see does it work on the coco Okay, so after a little bit of fooling around with this, we've now got a joystick that has a working fire button. So the next step is to try and get this to work with this Coco 2 here. And there's two little hurdles that we have to overcome in order to do that. The first one is probably the most major one. You saw this working absolutely fine with the Apple II, and it would also work absolutely fine with an old PC. The reason for that is the two pots inside in this thing. They are set up as variable resistors and that's the way they need to be set to work with the apple or a pc but for the old coco 2 here what it wants is it wants voltage dividers so we need to set up these pots a little bit differently in order for it to work with the coco so that's the first little thing that we need to do there's another thing as well this guy has a 15 pin male connector and we're looking to plug that into a six pin female connector on the back of the coco so that's kind of not really going to be able to be done so we've got two choices what we can do is we can chop off this connector and we can just solder on one of these six pin male thin connectors so that'll plug in and it's easy to do there's no electronics it's just straight through five volt to five volt ground to ground your x and y axes to x and y axes and your fair button one and two to fair button one and two and you could do it that way but what i've opted to do is to use one of these 15 pin female connectors so i'm making up kind of a a little uh, adapter cable more or less 
and that means I don't have to chop this off and really modify it heavily because I'd like to have this in such a way that I can down the road if I want to just undo the modification that we're going to do today and this will work away fine again with the Apple II or a PC or whatever I want. But what we're going to do first is we're going to see as it stands right now how it will work with the Coco 2. So I'm going to tap in a little program that will show us joystick movement and we'll see what we're getting right now. So let's do that. There we go. Okay, so what we have running down the screen here is 63 and 63. So we've got a line for each axis, the X and the Y one. And we should be getting 63, 63 if the joystick is pushed down and to the right. We get 0, 0 if it was pushed up and to the left. With the joystick in the middle here as it is, what we should really be getting is 61. No, sorry, is 31, 31. And well, as you can see, it's actually doing nothing at all. And that's because it's wired up wrong, as I said. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this up real quick. I'm going to heat up the solder now, and I'll show you a little mod that needs to be done to get this to work with this. So in about two minutes, we'll be back here and see if we've managed the mod. Now, I'm going to be absolutely honest with you. I have not done this mod before, and I read how to do it, and it's very, very simple, but I, mean, I don't know if it's going to work or not, but basically what we're supposed to do is you see on these pots here there's of the three pins two are used and one is unused so what we do is we join earth to each of those unused pins and that is the mod that is supposed to make it work so all i'm going to do is i'm going to take a piece of cable you remember a little bit earlier i fixed up a ground pin here that was broken or a ground cable that was broken i'm going to join another piece of cable into that or another piece of wire into that and just going to run it to the two pins here and then we'll put it back together and see does it work with the cocoa and hopefully it is as simple as that okay so we're after putting this back together i'm after running the little program on it again and i've gotten surprising results but well to tell you the truth it's probably not all that surprising because when i saw the way that the pots were wired up in this they were different than the way it was explained in what i had read but I tried it anyway just to see. But what we have going on here is when I push up on the x-axis here, we're going to 63. And when I pull down, we're going to zero. So it's backwards, in fact. It should go to 63 when I pull down and go to zero when I push up. But at least it shows that it is working on that axis. The x-axis, however, is a little bit mental. We've got 63 here when it's in the middle. And when I move it, there's not much happening but when I move it to the right everything goes to zero so like I say this is wired up a little bit differently than what the diagram I was looking at told me to expect so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up again we'll have a little look at and while we're at it we'll rewire the thing on the inside a little bit and see um, if we can get this to work correctly or not now you'll notice this little red wire here that's joining the two pots together. I have never seen or heard any mention of a wire like that before. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that wire. On the Y axis, when I push up, I'm getting 63. When I push down, I'm getting naught. So it's wired backwards. Well, the way we can repair that is I'm going to swap the positions of the five volt and the ground on that particular pot. And then I'm going to wire up the other pot for the X axis to correspond to the way the Y axis is wired up. So the three prongs, ground, five volt, and the sensor will be wired in pretty much the same manner. And we'll see what that gives us. Okay, so this has been an awful lot of fun. I'll tell you, I didn't film it really because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And on top of that, it took a little while and it wouldn't have been all that interesting. But what I can, what I can tell you is that I had the cocoa on and I had this program running. And when I wanted to modify any wires on the inside of the joystick, I disconnected it from the Coco so I wouldn't accidentally short anything out. And I removed wires. I figured out which was 5 volt. I knew which was ground. I had put it in myself. And I also determined that the X-axis wire was colored black and that the Y-axis one was actually colored red. So... It didn't really correspond to anything but uh, what I did was I wired it up exactly as a voltage divider should be wired up and what I have now is I have a joystick that works the way it should to the top left I've got zero zero and to the bottom right I've got 6363 and it's running through 
on all the numbers more or less the way it should now when it's all back together we'll fine tune it with little knobs here but i think it's a success i think we've got a joystick that'll work with our coco the way we want it to so let me put all this back together and we'll try it out with a game or two and see if this actually has been a successful mod or not okay so 15 minutes into the video we're after converting this guy to work on the old coco 2 and you're probably wondering what does an analog joystick have to offer that a digital one doesn't well i said to you at the beginning of the video that there was about 10 percent of the games that were written for the coco 2 would only work with an analog joystick and this here is one of them this here is polaris and it is a missile attack clone for the coco line of computers and i'm going to show you how it works here now we control this little cross here in the middle of the screen and as you can see with an analog joystick we have full control of where we want to put it on screen we don't have to wait until it goes up or down we can control it very quickly from left to right or all around the screen and in this game we're actually firing using the keyboard to try and protect our little islands here from being blown up but the thing is that using a joystick like this we have full control across the x and y axis and i'll show you how these trim pots work as well we can adjust this little cursor wherever we want on screen using those so normally we want it to be at the center of the screen when the joystick is centered now let me show you how this game plays using an atari digital joystick exact same game at polaris only this time we're using this atari 2600 joystick so you see this guy is still here in the center of the screen but when i push left or right we have no control we're either in the center of the screen or we're going to the extremes everywhere along the screen so actually the game is unplayable the reason for that is this guy relies on buttons it's either going left or right or up or down there's no potentiometer inside of it to actually control exactly where it goes on the x or y axis and that's why this joystick is great for about 90 percent of the games but completely useless for the 10 percent that can only be played with analog so you saw what we managed to do today was take a regular cheap enough PC analog joystick and convert it so that it could work with pretty much any of the Tandy Radio Shack color computers. And it wasn't really all that hard to do. In fact, there's probably three ways that this mod can go for you. Number one, you open up the joystick, you take your art or your ground line from the fire button down to each of the unused tabs on the potentometers and it just works for you. That's the best case scenario. The second one is you did do this mod and you find that everything's reversed. Up is down, down is up, left is right, right is left. If that's what happens, what you need to do is just reverse the position of the 5 volt and ground on each of the pots and that should repair it for you. The third case scenario is kind of what I came across here. It's wired up in a way that you're not expecting at all and if you're like me, you're not quite clever enough to figure out exactly how it's wired so you strip everything back and just through trial and error you'll get it working. So everything I found on the web to do this is listed down in the description below. And while you're at it, take a look at some of the channels I've lift, listed down below as well. Some of the other YouTubers I've listed because I was invited to join a group called the YouTube Retro Repairers and I joined them. And well, once every month, there'll probably be a live stream featuring the six of us but uh, check out their channels below and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with a really really bad joke this is one that I made up years ago when I was working in a place and everyone agreed that it was brutally bad but here you go anyway how does a robot eat its sandwiches robots don't eat sandwiches but still if they did how would a robot eat its sandwiches megabytes <laughs> <laughs>